Hello and welcome to the SKU Savvy YouTube channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to go through a tutorial on how to place purchase orders within SKU Savvy. If you haven't done so already, make sure to get a free SKU Savvy account at skewsavvy.com forward slash register where you'll get 50 orders for free every single month. And once you set up your account, you'll be able to connect with Shopify, which will bring over all of your products, locations as warehouses, customers, orders, inventory, and vendors. So as you can see here, I'm within my vendors. And actually, if you are planning to place purchase orders, head over to the features and go ahead and turn on purchase order management, which is going to enable the vendor selection with your products. So as you can see, I have a vendor here and I've already gone ahead and set up a few items that are associated with this vendor, provided a unit cost, and also if needed, provided a vendor SKU. With this product vendor alignment, uh, and to set that up, you can just select products underneath the vendor profile, and that will go ahead and assign that product to the vendor. So we can go ahead and add a new item there to this vendor. And once you've done this, you can start the order process by just simply creating an order, selecting your warehouse and going into that warehouse, which is already gonna have the inbound order creation form with that vendor selected. So next up, you can simply go into the delivery date and select when you'd want that order delivered. Then you can go ahead and select the products that you want to order from this vendor. Now, as you can see, I have an item here which is running a little bit low compared to where the min and max par value ranges are. So this is what we would call an automated replenishment, which is going to set this number here when we apply the suggestion. Now, there's another video on how to go ahead and set up automated replenishment, but the short story is you'd go into the inventory level on a product and you'll go down to automated replenishment, turn this on, and select the minimum and maximum quantities. Once you do that, again, that number is going to be held within the par value ranges and taking into consideration your on-hand value, committed values, and expected inbound values, as well as the sales rate of the product itself. So as you can see, I've already gone ahead and created a inbound purchase order here. That's also going to bring over a purchase order, which is gonna send out to your vendor and they'll be able to click into this and view the purchase order that you've sent them. They can make adjustments to the quantities and cost, which will be reflected back in your account. They can also grab an invoice for the purchase and then go ahead and confirm the purchase order. So once your vendor has confirmed the purchase order or once you're ready to check that product in, you'll go into your purchase order by accessing it through a warehouse, orders inbound, and selecting your previously created purchase order. Within here, we'll head down to the check-in spot on shipments and you can scan it to a advanced shipment notice or perhaps a uh, invoice from the vendor themselves. So you can scan that shipment and that will relate the barcode with your inbound order. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and check this in, or if it doesn't have a barcode, you can just go ahead and check it in. Uh, at this point, we could just assign it to an inbound area, or we can go ahead and receive the purchase order. So a few different options here, which you can pull up by clicking on the three dot menu. Right now I have the scans turned off. So we can go ahead and turn on an inbound scan, which is gonna require us to go ahead and scan the items as they come in. Rapid mode will cycle between scanning an item and scanning to a bin, which will make it very fast to go through a lot of items on your inbound purchase order. You can turn on one scan is equal to one quantity, which of course just makes the scan equal to a quantity of one, as opposed to being able to enter the full quantity that you're expecting. You can also allocate the item immediately to a bin after scanning it. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the scan off for right now. And as you can see down below, we can see where these items are already located around the warehouse that we're checking in to know where we should be placing our inventory as it comes in. 
So I'm going to go ahead and receive these quantities. I've got two. And this is an expiring product. So we're going to go ahead and give it a lot. I'm going to assign it to an existing lot. And then we can go ahead and scan the rest of these items. So I've scanned all of the items in and now I'm going to allocate the very last item. Now if I wanted to see where that was already stored, I can come down here and look and see, okay, V012. And I will go ahead and allocate this to V012. This is the test scanner, by the way. So normally it might just pull up to the camera or we could use a connected Bluetooth scanner. So we've gone ahead and already received all of the inventory that we're expecting here. If you did not receive all inventory, when you go ahead and complete the order, it will record the discrepancies on the purchase order. You can also leave the purchase order open. And when new quantities come in, for instance, if we had only received one of the daily health stack, we could record that as one and leave the purchase order open. So once we have scanned in all of the inventory here, we're gonna go ahead and complete this purchase order. That's gonna mark it as done within the system and close out the purchase order so that we can have our inventory values reflected from this inbound order here. Hopefully that was helpful. Quick tutorial on the purchase order process within SKU Savvy. Make sure to get a free SKU Savvy account and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.